How are we doing? Sorry about that. Uh, let's just dive into it. What do we got? Um, you know, I don't know if I'll go into the totality of strengths and weaknesses of the entire draft, but uh, I'll say this. I think, obviously, going down to the Senior Bowl and, and having that opportunity to work with everybody down there gave us a good head start uh, into the process. Um, you know, I think we had some really great guys that we worked with. I think there's uh, definitely some, you know, strong position groups out there uh, where it looks like there's, you know, a lot of depth, but we'll see how that all kind of transpires here as we go through the rest of the process, um, you know, as we get closer to the draft. But certainly from that standpoint, uh, you know, we had a great week down there working with those guys and just kind of getting to know him, so that was fun. Um, you know, I think, again, not every play is going to be the same. So there's certainly situations where, um, you know, I've been in games before where we've had uh, some max coverages called and, you know, uh, that the rush is not necessarily going to get there. But all of a sudden, you know, one guy beats another guy and uh, it's a sack in that situation just as quick if it was four or five guys. So I think all of it's, um, you know, generally kind of plays off each other. There's matchups involved. There's different things when you look at all that. But I do think as an overall kind of conversation piece and a statement that you have to understand, um, look, there's, there's a timing to every play. And the timing of that play depends on not only the call, but it also depends on the situation. Situation could be down and distance, could be personnel based, could be area of the field based. So I think that allows everybody to kind of have that conversation as far as, you know, what is the timing of that particular play, either side of the ball. Yeah. Yeah, great question, because I think we've been having that conversation for at least the last 20 years, um, you know, and I think um, depends, right? Depends on which corner and which pass rusher you're talking about. Um, certainly, if Lawrence Taylor's out there, you're going to take that guy 10 out of 10. Um, but I think all of it is um, directly a great conversation piece, because I think they relate to each other. No difference than, you know, like we were just talking about the marriage or Russian coverage. But um, I think if you have dynamic people in one of those situations, you can play off of that either way and try to, you know, scheme things or manipulate. Uh, those those plays in a certain way, but um, I would say that's a you know kind of a continual battle of conversation. Which one would you rather have? I think you know both. If you could get it, that'd be great, right? In which part of the game? I know pass or run. I mean, I think, you know, it depends on the run style that you play from that standpoint. I think, um, you know, if you're a, an attacking, penetrating style, defensive front, you know, everything else has to fit in behind it. Um, you know, the run fits of the linebackers, the secondary support, things like that that go into it. Um, I don't think anybody on defense in general doesn't attack, you know, their, it's kind of their, their nature in general. They like to be aggressive. Uh, you're going to attack the line of scrimmage. It just depends on how far, you know, you move upfield in the run game. I think in the pass game, obviously, you know, it's one goal and just try to get to the quarterback. So you're going to have to have some sort of complementary rush, both inside and outside, um, you know, whether it's just a, a straight rush on the edge or you're working different types of games or different types of uh, stunts from that standpoint. But uh, certainly to have the ability to push the middle of the pocket is really important. Um, I, I would say in general with the draft, I think there's excitement. Yeah, I mean, I love to, you know, be in a situation where you feel you have um, different options. I would say um, you don't want to be, you know, picking in certain slots based on how the previous year went. But certainly moving forward and looking ahead, uh, you know, you like the flexibility that that gives you in a lot of different areas. You know, um, I think there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of fun to that. You know, it'd be a great conversation because it hasn't happened. So uh, no one really knows. There's no trends. There's no tendencies to follow with that. So um, I think for us, whatever the situation is, we just try to, you know, handle that. Um, if if it is a situation where we have to travel to London or to, to any of those um, to those spots, so um, you know, we'll just we'll attack it when it happens if it happens. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for 
uh, for Damon and all the stuff that he did for us and, and, you know, the way that he approached every single day, the way that uh, he and I worked together, you know, I thought was great. And uh, we had a lot of open conversations, you know, all the way through uh, when we first got him and even into this year and, and kind of trying to get on the same page. Um, you know, we're just trying to always do what's best for the team uh, going forward. And, and, and certainly it's something that uh, in conversation between, you know, both parties, uh, you know, thought it would be a... Um, you know, just that time for that kind of, you know, departure. And uh, from that standpoint, though, I mean, I think, again, like I said, I have the utmost respect for him and his ability to, to play the game, play it at a high level. Uh, but for, you know, where we're at right now, we're just kind of going ahead with a different way. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, uh, I would say for us, the progression of TJ probably started in um, – you know, more in the spring when we got him out there and some of the practices through training camp, some of the things that we were able to see kind of on the field. Uh, you try to prepare and get ready for the season and get, you know, the, the player ready for some of the different changes that's going to happen during the season. Um, obviously, coming out of the Arizona game, there wasn't a lot to hide at that point. Um, but, you know, what we had to do is try to get him informed of different looks he might see and kind of really uh, improve his overall knowledge of how the tight end position can be, you know, defended against defensively and try to get him caught up to speed. I think he, you know, he works hard, plays hard, obviously plays aggressive. Uh, all the things you love about him is, you know, what you see every day and, uh, you know, it'll be a bigger challenge coming up this year. And, and certainly he's got his work cut out for him from that aspect of it. So uh, we'll do everything we can to try to, you know, try to progress him from there. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, Corey is, is someone that I've, um, you know, met a long time ago and have great history with, but I think his own kind of development as a coach and in, in the different places that he's been and, uh, you know, the areas that he's been able to kind of master from that standpoint are something that complement uh, some of the coaching styles and some of the coaching uh, philosophies that I have. So I think that's a great kind of, you know, um, marriage to have between the two of us there. And I think uh, he's a guy that really... Uh, Everywhere he's been, he has great value. Uh, I know, um, you know, personally, I feel really fortunate to be able to get him out of Philly. I know that was a hard deal for, for them, but, uh, you know, as great as uh, the opportunity was, uh, they recognize that and trying to do the best for him, too. So, you know, I thank Philadelphia for that. But uh, just excited to get back in and, and uh, you know, to work with him again. He's got a great family, and, uh, you know, we're excited to have him in Detroit. Um, I think we've talked about kind of just, you know, in general guys that have been brought on board. Um, you know, we'll probably get that out pretty soon with everybody's, you know, the titles and all the rest of that here coming up. But um, we're adding kind of a couple more pieces and still in the process of, of finalizing all that. Um, again, like Tyrone McKenzie, something that we hired, uh, you know, Hank Fraley. We moved to offensive line with Jeff leaving. Uh, we're going to move. Billy Yates over uh, back to the offensive side of the ball. He played O-line uh, back in the day. So, uh, you know, he's familiar with that. Um, you know, Ben Johnson was with us last year. He'll probably move into that tight end role. So, I mean, we kind of just have some of the moving pieces and we'll get that all out, you know, as soon as we can. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I think just for us, again, it's, you know, what we'll, I think both sides, you know, kind of felt like it was just time to move on and a uh, conversation that we had very openly, which I'll, I'll keep private, but uh, from that aspect of it, just trying to do everything we can to get ready to go next year. And, you know, that was kind of the best decision that we thought at the time. Um, I'm going to reserve kind of all, you know, evaluation pieces with those guys, um, you know, from the, the totality of that. Um, but uh, I know this. He's an extremely competitive guy. He plays hard. Uh, his teammates love to play for him. Um, you know, he can he can make a lot of great things happen on the field, like a lot of the guys that are in the draft uh, this year. Um, certainly uh, athletic, you know, explosive, dynamic, playmaking ability. So, you know, all those are positive. On the interviews, you're looking for passion. Um, because of how good what, what strategies have you used over the years to, to decipher? Yeah, sure. Yeah, great question, because I think that's gotten harder and harder. I think the the, um, the agents and everybody involved does a great job of getting the guys ready to go. I think in general with the interviews, um, all of them are a little bit different. I think it depends on kind of the information we're trying to find out on that particular player. Some schools or some relationships we might have at the schools where the, the kids play, we might have, you know, 
good information in one area and maybe there's other stuff that we need to find out. So certainly, um, you know, we're trying to do the best we can in, you know, the time that we're allowed to get to know them or at least start the conversation or maybe uh, check off some of the boxes and then we'll follow it up with either uh, trips to the school or uh, when we have our visits back at our facility. So kind of the, that's why the totality of the entire process is what's important. And, um, you know, we, we like to use all of that time right up until the draft and even as we're going through the draft to try to get as much information as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm you know excited about it. Excited to see what it looks like, and and um, obviously, uh, I think everyone's just trying to do everything they can to get better. And I think one of the things that's great about the combine is that. Um, you know, they're taking a look at it from the same standpoint. You know, how can we improve the information that's, um, or the time or uh, the schedule so that everybody gets as much as possible. So uh, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great shirt, right? I think it's just, it's just good. I appreciate that. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. No, it's just a, just a pretty good shirt. I like that. So, okay. And it fits, it fits, you know. It's a little bit tricky now. How we doing? Everybody good? You guys liking the new uh, combine schedule? I don't know yet. Like, I, I want to get through the, the next couple of days and see how it is with the uh, starting Thursday night, you know, so that'll be different. So it's going to be different for the players, different for us too, so I don't have an opinion yet. Yeah, so um, so the workouts start Thursday night, so the interviews will be Thursday during the day, Friday during the day, Saturday during the day. The, the first couple of days this week, are our interviews are at night. Like last night we started, and then tonight we'll have more. So. Yeah, we'll we'll look at all those guys. Um, it's a you know I think I said this a couple of days ago that you know we're drafting at three, so we have to we have to look at everybody. Um, we can't just um, concentrate on one one or two positions. So we'll we'll concentrate on all the positions, the best players in the draft, the best players in college football. And you know we're we're in February here, so we got two months to kind of really dive into it. Obviously, we've been watching them all year. Um, we'll get into the uh, the combine here, and then the pro days and the thirty visits and all those things. So there's just so much time between now and really when that decision happens to make but we're going to evaluate all the positions uh tj uh, i think we have a really good tight end that um had a really strong rookie season um ended with an injury but um he's uh fighting back so we're extremely happy to have him on our team and expect big things in going forward Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get into my, my evaluation of uh, all the quarterbacks at this stage. I think I'll keep that to myself, but I think there's a number of players at all the positions that are definitely worthy of the number three pick. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll take that as it comes and see kind of once we get into, I'd say, March and April and we get through free agency and kind of kind of reassess where we are, we'll probably have a better feel what direction we want to go. But right now it's, it's really early. Yeah, I think um, as you look across the draft board, I think, you know, um, the wide receiver position is really deep. Um, I think the running back position is really deep. Offensive line has some depth. depth. Um, the secondary has some depth. Um, D-line um, has a couple guys that are really uh, intriguing. Um, the quarterback. So it's really across the board, it's pretty deep. Um, some might be a little bit more top heavy, but there's some positions that are really, I'd say, value positions that you could get in this third, fourth, fifth round that maybe in years past would have to be a little higher. So. Um, there's a lot of names there, especially with the underclassmen that came out this year. There's uh, obviously more and more underclassmen coming out every season. So that's something that we have, as a staff, I think our staff does a great job of that. Um, we try to get ahead of those juniors. You can't leave, when you go to, when you visit the schools in the, in the fall, 
it's really hard to get a lot of good information on those juniors because obviously the schools want to keep them. But um, we, you know, have our eyes open to watch those guys on film. So, you know, a credit to my staff, you know, with, you know, Kyle O'Brien, Lance Newmark, Dave Sears, and all the area scouts, um, especially like the Southeast, like all those guys are in the SEC, the great majority of them. So, you know, our area scout uh, in the Southeast is Scott Sika. He lives in Atlanta and, um, you know, he probably has more prospects to evaluate than the, the other guys just based on where he lives and the schools that he goes to and what we expect about the information on the junior prospects uh, when we kind of start meeting in, in December. Um, those guys haven't declared yet, but we have to have those names kind of on the ready because we know a great majority of them are going to declare come January. So um, it's really, I think it's a deep draft, and uh, we'll dive into these guys a little bit more this week. Uh, Matthew's feeling good. Uh, I talked to Matthew a uh, week or two ago, and he's feeling really good. Uh, training full, and he'll be full goal for uh, off-season program. Uh, getting into your specific evaluations for guys, uh, Isaiah Simmons is one of those guys in the top 10, top 5 games. Is that yeah. position list? You know, there seems like there's more and more of those hybrid yeah. versatile guys. Does that make it harder or easier to get down um, maybe, maybe a little bit harder. You have a little bit more conversation about like, all right, we draft this guy. How are we going to use him? But like, that guy's a playmaker. Um, you know, you can he can do a, a, a variety of things at a very very high level. Um, you know, he obviously a couple years ago when he wasn't even eligible, coming down the stretch the last month of the college season, like he was he was probably one of the most dominant guys on that team, and they had a bunch of guys that got drafted last year. Um, so he was on our radar. He's great. He can cover tight ends. He can play the run. He can play sideline to sideline. He's a very good blitzer. Um, you know, he's not a big, big bodied inside linebacker that's going to take on blocks, but his athleticism, his range, and his ability just to make plays um, in both the run and pass game is, is really intriguing. He's a, he's a high level prospect. Yeah, it's a. Uh, we talk about it quite often about, you know, if there's a CBA, we can, you know, structure things differently. I think in terms of like our, you know, the free agency plans and what we can spend and all that stuff, it really doesn't affect it that much. It's really how you structure the contracts. Um, so that's something we have, uh, you know, an idea. If there's a CBA done, we can do certain, certain things. And if there's not, we're going to play under these rules. We can do these things. So we have kind of two, um, two scenarios that we always look at and we put, you know, potential guys that we might go after, put them in both, um, buckets and kind of see how they kind of shape out in terms of contracts but you know as you know mark you know the negotiating period is a couple weeks away so we'll kind of see what the market is on some of these positions we'll go after yeah yeah sure yeah i think they're both different situations um you know i think um each 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 player has, you know, different reasons why you move on or why you sign extensions. Things change uh, from year to year. This is a very, as you guys know, and probably more than anybody, this is a up to the minute business. Like you guys hear something and you guys are tweeting it without even checking, right? So guys, guys change. Um, their skill set changes. Their, you know, stuff changes in the building. Everything changes. So that's why we try to evaluate um, everybody, you know, constantly. And uh, it's really a, a day by day business. So. Uh, you know, Snacks came in, you know, I thought it was a really good, um, helped our defense a lot in 2018, um, had a really strong season. As you guys know, the numbers went up when he was in there. Um, and then this season, just it, it was kind of not, not quite to that level. And so uh, we just felt like the best thing moving forward was to um, kind of look at that position as a whole. And, and uh, we have a couple guys that are free agents, too, that we're still talking to. So we're going to have to kind of figure that out. But it was just a, a different scenario this year from 2019 to when we had him in 2018. So. Yeah, I think the value of the number three pick is always very high. It doesn't matter what the prospect is or what the year is, right? I mean, it's always going to be, you know, year to year, five or six guys that are just like really, really top prospects that anybody taken from number seven through number 20 would love to have. It's just all about the cost, right? It's all about the, you know, what would they give up to get there? So this year's a couple quarterbacks. There's a couple other positions that are, you know, in my opinion, are really good players too that, um, you know, if I do get calls, it might not be for quarterback. It might be for another position. So I think I have to look at that too and, and, and see, you know, what the overall value of all those positions are because I'm not, I'm not eliminating any position right now. Um, it's something we're just trying to make our team better. And if that's taking the best player at number three, 
that's great. If that's moving back and acquiring extra picks this year or, you know, in the future, that's something that you got to have to consider too. So um, everything is kind of on the table right now in terms of that. So one more time, Mike. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously that, that's why, you know, one of the main reasons we come and we send our doctors and our trainers to the to the combine is for the medicals. That's, you know, we get 300 and what, 50 of the best prospects um, here in one in one city and one facility and we get to do a full physical so by the time we leave here we'll have a really good understanding of kind of where these guys stand and sometimes um, guys that are recovering from injuries currently and can't work out here sometimes their medical gets delayed and they come to the rechecks I think it's the second week of April so some of those those um, that some of that information is delayed getting back to us so um, it's a, it's a crucial it's a crucial thing it's definitely part of the evaluation you don't want to you know obviously draft someone that's going to have a short shorter term career Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, you look at it every day. Um, you look at you know you look at your quarterback and see how he's playing. Um, and the one thing about Matthew is like you know his number one trait is still the same as it was when I came here four and a half years ago. Like he still has that great arm strength. He's a competitor. He's tough. Um, he's sneaky athletic. I think he's improved his athleticism a little bit um, over his career. He does a great job taking care of his body. So um, you take all those things into consideration, just like any other player. You have to see kind of are they ascending, are they declining, and I think it's different for every position in terms of how old they are, right? Because I mean, in my opinion, when when you're a quarterback, you know you're you're prime right is your late 20s into your early 30s like that's your prime because you take the first start of your first part of your career and you're kind of you're working on all those other things and we, as we saw you know how did Matthew play last year when he was out there like I think everyone would agree he played really good so um that's what we're expecting when he comes back so um but some positions kind of max out at different ages so you know if you're a whatever a skill guy sometimes it's a different it's a different age that you look at and see kind of going forward what you have so No, no, he's going to be good. Yep. Good here? Great. Good seeing you guys. Yep. Yep.